Hi everyone, uh, this video we're going to figure out how to find the equation. So when they say equation it's going to be of a straight line and by the way a straight line is in this form, okay? y equals mx plus b where m is the slope of the line and b is going to be our y-intercept or the spot where it cuts through the y-axis right here where I'm going up and down there. So that is the y-axis. And we're going to come up with an equation that can do this. Um, so we're going to find the equation of a perpendicular bisector. What that means is it's, a, it's going to be a line that is perpendicular. Some people call it a right bisector, but it's a line that cuts through another line at 90 degrees. Okay, And the word bisector has to do with cutting through not only at 90 degrees but also halfway in between this spot and this spot halfway in between would be called a bisector in the middle okay so let's read the whole title <laughs> let's find the equation of the perpendicular bisector of a line that joins two points okay so let's here's the two points they've given us and let's plot them really quick here and the graph has been moved over to the left here because I noticed that it's only negative 1 and 4. So we're going to go left 1 and 4 up. 1, 2, 3, 4. There's our first point. Okay, that's negative 1 and 4. And the second point is 7 and negative 2. I know 7 all the way to this point here and then down 2. And there it is. So that's point B and that's 7, negative 2. I'm just labeling it. And I'll draw a quick line using this smart board software here. It's nice because I can't draw straight lines like this. Now, I'm going to show you where my guess would be that a perpendicular bisector is, but we're going to find out for real later on. I'm guessing halfway in between these two points is probably right about here. And I'm guessing it's going to slice down like this kind of at a 90 degree angle, maybe slice through at the y-intercept of 1, 2, negative 3. So it's going to be a slope, and we can find slope by doing rise over run. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. It looks like, f if I was to make a guess, and you can check this later to see how close this guess is, I'd say the slope looks like it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 over 3, and then an x. Remember, we're making it in the form y equals mx plus b. And then the y-intercept happens to be below 0, 1, 2, 3 down. Something like that. Let's see later on if we get an answer something like this. But we're going to solve this using uh, equations and putting in these, these plotted points and finding the slope for a real. And we'll see if we can come up with what I just put down as a guess. Sometimes it's nice just to guess, though. Okay. Maybe... By, by the time I finish this, my memory will have forgotten whether or not it really is close to the guess, but we'll see. Okay, here we go. So the first thing we want to do is find, well, you, you don't have to do it in this order, but let's find the middle between this point and this point. Let's find the middle, which I believe is going to be right here. It's pretty easy to find the middle when you're given two points, okay? All you have to do well, it's this formula right here. It's called the midpoint formula. And you just add up the two x values that you're given. Just add them up and divide by 2. And do the same thing with the y values. And if this looks confusing, it's actually easier than it looks. All you do is add up the two x values. So you see the 7 here? That's an x value. So is the negative 1. Add them up. What's 7 plus negative 1? That's 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. Okay, so our x value in the middle is going to be 3, and what's the y value? Well, just add up the y values, just like it says here. So 4 plus negative 2 is 2. Okay, so 4 plus negative 2 is 2, and then divide by 2, and you get 1. And let's see if that makes sense. 1, 2, 3, and 1. It really does. That definitely is the middle. So our guess before is definitely on the, on the dot, and Yes, the pun was pretty bad, but that is our spot. So that is at point 3, 1, the midpoint. Okay, I'll put a little blue dot there. 
I'm going to get rid of this so that we have more room to do more work here now without having to change the page because it's nice to do everything while we look at this graph here. Okay, now a perpendicular bisector is one that is 90 degrees to this slope right here. So if we could find this slope right here using the slope formula, of course we could just count rise over run just by looking at it, but I'm going to use the slope formula in case you're not given a graph. So let's use the slope formula. The slope formula is when you take y2 minus y1, it's when you subtract the y values, and then you do the same thing on the bottom, you subtract the x values. Of course I have a video just specifically for how to use this formula. I'm going to have to assume here that you're familiar with this, okay? So you take the y value, it doesn't really matter which one you start with as long as you go in the right order. So 4 minus negative 2, careful, 4 minus negative 2, that gives us 6. Because we have two minuses, that creates a positive. So it's like saying 4 plus 2. And on the bottom we have negative 1 plus 7. Sorry, negative 1 minus 7, which is negative 1 minus 7 is negative 8. And if we were to reduce this, we would get negative, cut them both in half, we'd get negative 3 over 4. That is the slope of this line. If we want the slope of a perpendicular line, the rule is, is you flip this, you take the negative reciprocal or the opposite reciprocal. So you flip this, okay, so instead of 3 over 4, you write 4 over 3, and then you change the sign. So if it's negative here, this is going to be positive. So our slope that we're looking for is 4 over 3, and if you recall earlier when we made our guess, it was 4 over 3. So this is really good news, okay? So the slope is 4 over 3 of the perpendicular line to this one. The slope is 4 over 3. So let's, um, let's remember that the slope is 4 over 3 as we get rid of all this. So we know the slope is 4 over 3 of the line that we're looking for. And we also know that one point on that line, one point on this line is 3, 1. Okay, so this is the slope, and that can be put in right here. We have an x value here, which is 3, and that could go right there. And we have a y value here, which could go right where the y is. And if we put all of these numbers in the right spots, we can come up with the y-intercept, the spot where we think, or the spot that we predicted earlier, where the, the line would cut through the y-axis. So let's do that. Instead of y here, I'm going to write a 1. Okay. Instead of m, I'm going to write 4 over 3, because that's our slope. I'm going to put it in brackets, because that has to be multiplied by the x value, which is 3. Okay. And then we have plus b, the b being the y-intercept, the part we're looking for. Now, if you know how to multiply fractions, 4 over 3 times 3 over 1 would give you 12 over 3, which is just 4. Or you could say these 3's, they just cancel because a 3 on top and a 3 on the bottom just cancel. We end up getting 1 equals 4 plus b. And the way to get rid of this 4 is subtract 4 from both sides. So 1 minus 4, well that, it disappears on this side, but 1 minus 4 is negative 3. And that to me is also something that I believe we predicted before. The negative 3 um, was a spot that we had predicted. 1, 2, 3. So we now know that the line really does cut through. And I'm going to draw, I don't know, a different colored line. But the line is 90 degrees and it's cutting through these two spots. But this question didn't ask for us to draw this. It didn't even say we had to draw it. I'm just drawing it so that it's more clear. What the, what the question is asking, and maybe your textbook is asking the same thing, is what's the equation? So let's put the final equation right here. I'll do it in green. So y equals the slope is 4 over 3. Then we put the x, and then we put the y-intercept right here, which we found to be negative 3. So here we have it. We have the equation of the perpendicular bisector that cuts through this 
line that we're given, these two points. Okay? We have completed the question according to what they asked, and we are done. Okay? Boy, if you have tons of questions, just remember there are videos I have that show you how to find the slope of something. I also have videos that show you how to find the midpoint between two points. And uh, watching those first would help make this less confusing in case you're sitting there confused, which I'm not intending to do. All right. Have a great day. Take care.